There are numerous milestones in a pet's life that will spark a nutrition conversation, starting with that first appointment when a new client comes to the clinic with an adult pet or with a newly adopted puppy or kitten. I always ask clients if they've owned a dog or a cat before as a way to gauge their experience level and gather information. I also ask if they have questions about food and then I offer suggestions to start them on the right path. This visit is also an ideal time to show them how to do a body condition score. Another important topic specifically for puppy and kitten owners is spaying and neutering, which will cause a decrease in their energy needs. It'll be important to make a food change or adjust food intake whenever a pet is spayed or neutered. So it's important to have a follow-up plan. There are at least two life stage changes that call for nutrition discussion. One is the transition from growth stage to adulthood at around one year, although large and giant breed dogs have a prolonged growth stage. Another is when pets transition from adulthood to their senior years. This happens at age six to eight for dogs and around age eight to 10 for cats. Senior pets have many unique needs that can often be proactively addressed through targeted nutrition. Depending on the climate, there may be times during the year when pets spend most of their time indoors or are less active. Changing seasons may bring about activity changes and these changes can impact their nutritional needs. With this in mind, some pets will do better with a diet change to meet their different seasonal needs or a summer diet and a winter diet. For example, a client living in a cold climate with a sporting dog that's actually spending more time outdoors and expending more energy, their dog may need more calories than usual. My goal is to help the pet maintain a stable, healthy body weight throughout the year and avoid periods of unhealthy weight gain or loss. This is why it's important to proactively discuss potential seasonal and activity changes as they relate to that specific individual pet. There are several other events that should trigger a nutrition conversation. The first is a new pet adoption. Some questions that might influence this nutrition conversation could include, was that pet adopted from a shelter or a rescue group? They were likely recently spayed or neutered before they come to you. Was the pet adopted from a breeder who has a specific pet food recommendation? Will the pet be living in a multi-pet household? Although clients very often want all pets to eat the same food, you should have a conversation about the individual needs of each pet and help them create a culture where each pet's needs are being met and that pet's needs will likely change over their lifespan. And finally, is this a rescued pet who's in poor health? If so, you'll want to recommend a follow-up visit so that you can be sure this pet is firmly on the path to success.